Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, defend and cleanse your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this desert, this wilderness, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He rained down flesh upon them like dust, and winged birds like the sand of the sea. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, They said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, 
but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. There is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday we come to this place and we hear stories all kinds of stories. Stories about Jesus healing people who are sick, but sometimes we miss the link that the illness that he particularly tends to heal restores them from being outcast in society. And it reminds me of the AIDS, AIDS epidemic which created both people suffering and dying and people outcast from society. Jesus' healing restores health and full inclusion in the community. And we always need to pay attention to that living in a time of pandemic. On some Sundays, we hear riddle-like parables that challenge what we think we know about God and about God's kingdom, which is like, for example, a mustard seed smaller than a grain of sand and yet grows exponentially beyond anything imaginable from such an infinitesimally small beginning, from virtually nothing to everything. The kingdom of God is like that. Every Sunday we hear the stories of God's movement and manifestation in the world. But I have to ask myself and and you as well. Do we hear and do we see? And then there is last week's story of the central miracle told in all four Gospels, the feeding of a multitude, which continues today and for several weeks yet to come. 
Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish. Or is it fishes? Fish. <laughs> to feed 5,000 hungry travelers. People who are traveling from afar to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Sometimes we... Sometimes we get a bit lost in these stories. Especially when, like this one, we hear only a piece of it each week. Also, we all come to church with various beliefs and varying levels of biblical knowledge and speaking for myself, a fair share of blind spots. So please allow me to pause for a moment and take a step back and allow me to ask this. In what Jesus does and says in this story of the feeding, what might he be trying to get you and me to see that we have not yet seen? And I really do mean you and me right here, right now. There is no other time that matters. Christ is present among us and the Holy Spirit dwells within you and me to lead us in this Christian community into truth. So what might Jesus be asking us to see that like the people in today's story, we haven't yet seen about him? The people who find Jesus in today's story were among those at the feeding of the 5,000 the evening before where Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. And everyone was fed and filled. What was that sign about? So there are some people who saw what happened, who ate, and the next day, went to the trouble to cross the sea over to Capernaum to look for Jesus, which is a tremendous commitment of time and energy for someone you might not even find. But Jesus doesn't exactly welcome them, does he? Not at all. Instead, he rather bluntly meets them by telling them the truth. You're not here because you saw the sign. You were there, but you didn't see. You've come because yesterday you were given food. And so, I suppose, they wanted more. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's more. But then Jesus proclaims to those people who found him cosmic truth, universal truth that you and I must wrestle with alongside those in the story. We have to struggle to see. I think it might be helpful as we consider what Jesus says next, first to share something that a dear friend and colleague of mine teaches out of the Christian wisdom tradition, which is this. The greatest gift of the spiritual life is that no one else can do it for you. The greatest challenge of the spiritual life is that no one else can do it for you. Gift and challenge. To the gathered crowd, Jesus says, you're here for the wrong thing. You found me for the wrong reason because you want me to fill your craving for you. You want me to fill your emptiness. Jesus says, in effect, that it's time to grow up. The trajectory of his whole ministry says that the religious system of offering sacrifices to appease or please God, to transact an exchange of blessing or forgiveness in return for the right words or the right offering of animals, that that way of religion has lost its way and forgotten the truths that the rituals were supposed to preserve in the first place. No wonder so much of our contemporary culture is 
hungry and starving and anxious and worried and frightened. We have been feasting our attention at the table of wolves, of bad shepherds who want to devour nothing less than the essence of all we have, our attention. Mostly, it's the peddlers of media and entertainment who trade in the snake oil of fear and sow seeds of distrust for one or another group of humans. And so we, like these people in the story who sought after Jesus, many of us too are starving, starving to death for real meaning, real safety and peace, real dignity and love, real grace and real mercy. Jesus simply says, do not give your one life to things that cannot give life. Instead, and this is the part we might pay closest attention to, Jesus instructs us to do the work of God, which is to believe in the one God has sent to feed us. Remember that in this story and in the Old Testament, bread means life. Without bread, the Hebrews would have starved after leaving Egypt. So alluding to the manna, the bread that God gave to sustain his chosen people, Jesus says, it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. Jesus is talking about bread, but much, much more than bread. Now he said that true bread is something that gives life to the world. It sounds pretty interesting to me, yes, this true bread. And so the people listening to him say, sir, give us this bread always. And I wonder if they say always because they never want to be hungry again. But they also are asking Jesus to do it for them. So then Jesus places the whole truth before us, simply saying, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Do you see something you didn't before? What was revealed in the sign of the feeding? What did the pillar of fire and smoke in the wilderness reveal to the Israelites? It revealed that God is here. And also in the manna and the quail that God sustains us. And now in the multiplication of bread and fish, God's presence is revealed in this person. That who Jesus is, is life. What Jesus is, is life. What Jesus does, is life. Ponder this as, as a people baptized into the life and the death and the resurrection of God incarnated. What might that mean when we dare to do the thing that Jesus proclaims to those with ears to hear? Believe in him whom God has sent. Believe. Believe. Which, as some of you I know have heard in the past, the word believe is derived from a word that meant to so love a thing, a person, to so love something that you give your wholeness to it. You beloved it, and then you believe it. It's not about knowing and reasoning, it's about loving. Loving the one whom God has sent. As a people baptized into the life, death, and risen life of Jesus, 
we trust that Christ lives within us, growing like the mustard seed into a kingdom of grace and mercy, a kingdom of self-giving, of generous and abundant life that isn't eternal in the sense of has no time, it simply cannot die. It can only be shared. It can only be freely given away, this life in Christ. It can only be poured into others. Jesus gives us outward and visible signs of God's grace so that we never forget where God's spirit dwells. It dwells in the Christ living within us. Yes, we do have outward signs like the bread and the wine, the body and the blood. But we also have visible signs everywhere around us in hugs and in tears, in patience and forbearance, in every act of love and beauty, of listening. The signs of God's presence surround us, as does a great cloud of witnesses who have gone before, who sing and shout songs of praise into the universe. But we miss them. We miss them when we feast on bread that does not endure, when we give our attention to wolves, to negativity, to distrust, and we forget that it is Christ we face in the face of the other. When we choose bread that is not the bread of life, we forget what we are, God's beloved children, and whose we are, God's beloved children. Lord, open our eyes to see your face in our neighbor. Open our eyes to see you in ourselves. Open our lips that we may confess your redeeming love to the world in all that we say and all that we do by your mercy and in your presence. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for ourselves and others. Loving God, enliven the church for its mission. That we may be salt of the earth and light of the world. God of creation, awaken in us a sense of wonder and reverence for all you have made. Inspire us to care for the earth and all its inhabitants. God of mercy, inspire and strengthen us to do your will that whenever we fall into sin, we may repent and return to the Lord. God of compassion, help us to discern your presence in one another. That we may seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. God of the nations, help us to strive for justice and peace among all people. That in word and deed, we may respect the dignity of every human being. God of eternity, we pray for all who have died. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord. And let the light perpetual shine upon them. Let us now name before God those for whom we offer our personal prayers either silently or aloud. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. I know it's on. Yeah, back up here. No, no, man. Sorry. Okay. Clearly, we have some work to do on my microphone. <laughs> no one else. A few others, too, perhaps. Yeah. But. Good morning. Uh, 
we're glad to see all of you this morning. We'd like to particularly welcome our visitors. We have a visitor's card in the pew. If, you've, if you're visiting with us and have never filled out one of these, we'd love to get to know you, so please uh, fill this out, give it to one of the clergy, or you can put it in the offering plate. We're really glad everyone is here. Let me just say a word about this. None of us really like wearing these. I know that. Um, we felt like, given the rapidly changing situation in the world, we needed to do this. We don't know what's going to happen. We do have a medical advisor with whom we are uh, working with this week. The thing I want to say, and then I'll turn it over to Will, is that in the church, we're called to be different. We're called to hand, handle things differently than the way we see, uh, see things happening in the world. That means that we're going to love one another no matter where we're coming from about these things and figure it out together. We're called to be one body and one spirit and uh, similar to what John said in his sermon, take our cues from what Jesus might have us to do and love one another. So we'll get through this together no matter where we end up with this. And as I said, it's a rapidly changing situation and we are consulting with folks who can help us with it. So please be patient and love one another in the midst of it. Will? Thank you, Pat. Thank you all for uh, being here. A special welcome to all of you. And a couple uh, more specific announcements. Uh, the other show and tell would be also in your pew, a different color, uh, is a note about the e-spirit. And that has been the primary way in which we have been in touch with folks. We sent one, a special edition out on Friday, letting you all know that everyone up here would be wearing a mask in, in uh, this service today. And that will be uh, likely where we will communicate probably mid next week about where we'll be going from here, how we can respond to things like the Delta variant and other things. So just if you don't subscribe to that, I please encourage you to do so. Um, the other show and tell is the spirit, which is I invite you to look at and take home and put on your, uh, on your uh, refrigerator at home. Um, there's a great um, offering led by our not really new anymore director of outreach, Ron Brown, uh, some of you all may have seen the video profiling him and our outreach work here. I hope you will take a look at that. He is offering uh, a couple of different sessions on trauma-informed care, which I dare say we've all experienced trauma over the last year and a half, if not on multiple levels, and is a, a really sort of baseline for how we are seeking to be about ministry in all forms going forward now, acknowledging that we've all been through quite a lot, and all of us have normal lives, which have ups and downs in addition, that has nothing to do with the pandemic, um, that will inform how we respond to all kinds of things. So one of those will be on Zoom, so if uh, being here in person is not uh, a preferred method, I invite you to be part of that. There's also notes here about uh, high school acolytes and middle school ushers. My colleagues John Jenkins and Betsy Tyson invite you if that um, that applies to you or someone you know, invite you to uh, be in touch with them. Lastly, um, I think the rain is sort of rained, not rained, rained again. I can see the sun out there now. But um, we our lemonade fellowship time was such a big hit last week. Uh, we are, of course, going to continue that. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be at the second breezeway over here, just so it's not, so it's a dry affair. Um, I would invite you to stay and have some fellowship time. Thank you. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior of and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, 
that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Stephen, the blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love, and all those God calls you to love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Christ. Thank you, God. 